Awesome. Hey, folks. Good Thursday. Welcome to Acknowledging Our Elders. I'm glad y'all are able to join. My name is Nathan Hunter. I'm with the Bronx River Alliance. And today I'm joined by Journey Bimwala. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. It's always a pleasure to have you guys meet us here every Thursday. My name is Journey Bimwala. I am a clinical herbalist, um, food weight co-chair, and member of Friends of Concrete. Yes. And we're so excited to be joined by Lachette today. Um, Lachette, welcome to Acknowledging Our Elders. Would you mind just introducing yourselves to folks? Hi, um, Lachette Williams, I guess. I'm a local here in the Bronx, about 20 minutes from the foodway and an increasingly avid user and visitor of Concrete Plant Park. And um, happy to be participating in this series. Thank you, Lachette. We are happy to have you here. So this is this is gonna be fun. Sure is. So I'm just gonna pull up our kind of guiding PowerPoint so we can have some visuals to introduce what? What are we talking about today, Lachette? <laughs> uh, we're talking about plantain, wild plantain, uh, plantain leaf, not, I stress is not to be confused with the banana-like plantain, completely, totally different plant altogether. Um, and uh, there are various different types of plantain, so, I'll be focusing on uh, two or three, but they're all part of uh, this plantain family, the Planta gymnasia, um, yes. as you see on the screen there. And um, I'm focusing on the ones that you'll find pretty easily in abundance um, in the Foodway and Concrete Plant Park. And honestly, just in general, here in the Northeast, a lot, if you have a lawn, you've probably come across uh, several of these, if not more than just these. And uh, when we see, um, on the screen, we're seeing three on the left, the plant, Plantago Mugeli, then Plantago Major, also called broadleaf plantain, and on the right, the, um, sorry, Plantago lanceolata or narrow leaf plantain. And I, to be perfectly honest, I don't know a lot about Plantago regelli, so I'm gonna focus on the other two. But um, the main thing that they have in common of um, being part of the plantain family is, uh, their green plants that grow out um, in this like rosette formation or like when you look at a rose from the center, um, they grow out in kind of a circle. The difference between the broad leaf and the narrow leaf you could see is one has a broader leaf and one has a narrow leaf. And that's how we come to these common names. People see things and they're like, what does that remind me of? What do I think of? Or how do I tell the difference? But, um, so the broadleaf plantain has a couple of names. Um, ripple grass, uh, whey bread or rope bread, uh, snake weed, cuckoo's bread. And my favorites are English man's foot and white man's foot. Um, and those come from two different uh, places. The United States being the white man's foot, um, the indigenous or native tribes, I'm not sure exactly which ones, um, but it is said that the indigenous peoples of the United States call um, this plant white man's foot and the indigenous people of Australia call this plant English man's foot. Um, what both of these plants have in common is that they 
are originally native to Northern Europe and Asia, but have spread to six out of seven continents in the world. And um, I'll get into exactly how though, if you're into plants in any way, shape or form, like the seeds did it. Um, and it's, it's pretty interesting uh, that they're so easily distributed and they just plant themselves in most types of soils because obviously the entire, all the only continent they're not on is Antarctica for obvious reasons, but it's very interesting to me that there's all, the diff all these different soils and earth uh, materials on the different continents and yet these plants are growing there anyway. Um, so I thought I'd share that. Uh, the narrowly planted, the one on the right, some names are ribwort plantain, snake plantain, black plantain, long plantain, um, jack straw, lamb's tongue, and um, many other names. What they have in common other than spreading through almost all the continents and being native to Europe and Asia. Um, the seeds are very sticky and we get back to some of those uh, names, English man's foot and white man's foot and the fact that Scientists are able to tell that human settlements have been in certain places thanks to, in part, the seeds of these plants or these plants growing in certain places so they can follow in the footsteps of the Englishmen or the white men from Northern uh, Europe and see where they settled based on where those plants have shown up. Uh, The, you can harvest them, and I'll get to the reasons why you'll want to in a second, but you can harvest them from spring to fall. They're already growing in Concrete Plant Park, and like I said, probably in a lot of people's lawns. Um, there's, this is considered a weed. I believe that uh, both the broadleaf and the narrow leaf, I'm not sure of the Plantago Mugelli, but I think both of them are known to draw a lot of nutrients from the soil, taking away from the uh, grass that a lot of people want growing evenly on their lawn. So a lot of people dig them up and get rid of them, not realizing that the seeds stick around literally. But um, you wanna get them, get the leaves usually before they flower. Uh, if you plan on ingesting them because you can use them in your salads, they're good for you, those spring greens. Um, and your soups and things like that, just for cooking, you wanna get them in early spring when they're less bitter, if that really matters to you, but they're still edible in the summer and the fall. It's just personal preference, I guess. Uh, for the seeds, you can harvest those. Uh, they start being really available, it seems like midsummer and into the fall. So we say all of this, but it's like, what are we using these plants for? Um, why do I want this weed? Why do we care? Uh, so they have a lot, a lot of uses. And um, I just think it's cool that, you know, the earth is giving us something that we could need in various forms. Um, so you can use the fresh leaves for either the broadleaf plantain or the narrow leaf plantain. Um, just use them whole or bruised slightly for pulse, poultices. So let's say you get an insect bite while you're out in the park. Um, 
you can break off some leaves and put them directly onto the bites and they help relieve itching and small burning. Um, so they're also good for um, stings from like nettles, uh, for small burns. I actually, I did not plan this. I promise you 100%. A couple of days ago, I actually, I was cooking in my kitchen and um, flipping over, I think it was pork chops in oil I was frying and it slipped off the tongues and, you know, splashed burning oil onto my hands. And um, after I put my hand into the cool water, I actually put some plantain oil over it and the like, I hadn't used it before for something like that. I don't get, you know, burns very often, but it was just like, well, I have it and I happen to be burning. So I used it and it's instantly like a cooling sensation. Um, the redness definitely went away very quickly. Um, no blistering or anything like that. Um, not that I was expecting it. It wasn't like, you know, third degree burns or anything, but um, it has a cooling and a drawing sensation that both of these uh, plantain leaves, and they're also known to help with um, minor bleeding with wood wounds, excuse me. So just that little bit, um, we can go back to some of the names. I mentioned some of the common names. So um, other than the English man's foot and the white man's foot, we talked about like lamb's tongue um, and uh, drop straw, um, things like that. These are things um, and the whey bread. Um, it's, this is a very, these are very popular plants, particularly with the Anglo-Saxons. So they would use these for stuff like this for burns and whatnot. And uh, some of those terms, I'm not a ling linguist, uh, but some of those terms refer to um, the uses in those ancient languages. Um, but the reason I personally started looking into plantain was I had seen and heard that it's very good for skincare. And I mean, obviously some of the stuff I already mentioned, but those are like wounds if you injure yourself kind of thing. Uh, but the same effects apply if um, let's say it's good for um, acne, uh, the same cooling and drawing sensation when we get pimples and things like that, you know, the stuff comes up, your skin is red, it gets painful um, and then you have things building up under your skin that are trying to escape by having a hard time. Um, so the plantain, again, you can use it like a poultice um, or you can make an ointment or an oil um, and put that on and it helps the, the soothing, the cooling, does the same effect and uh, helps to draw out the, I'm forgetting the word, but um, the pus and whatnot within your pimples and things like that. Um, it also helps, like I said, with um, minor wounds and sometimes we get like acne scarring, scratching, things like that. Um, so it helps with healing that. Um, a lot of the dark spots that we have on our skin, whether it's our face or other places, um, those are scarring from wounds and it helps to reduce that. Um, another thing is I suffer from eczema. It's uh, thankfully currently not too bad, but um, for any other people with skin irritations like that, skin uh, allergies for lack of a better term, um, the plantain oils and ointments um, that contain plantain help in the same way it, it's cooling, um, it reduces the redness and bumps and scarring. I have been using the plantain oil on the few spots of eczema that I have, and it's been working great, and I plan to use it 
forever because eczema does not go away. It just disappears for a little while. Um, but there are other ways to use it. You can make a tincture, which is um, infusing the plants into alcohol rather than an oil. And you can use that for bug bite sprays. Uh, you can make a tea or a decoction, like, which is like a long term tea. So I've had this sitting for like 16 hours so far. I don't know how well you can see it, but we've got plantain leaf and just water. Um, and there's several ways you can use that. You can drink it. It's very good for um, stomach irritations like diarrhea or uh, gas. Um, that's what I'm looking for. Just whatever stomach irritation you can think of, you can drink some as a tea or uh, the decoction. You can also use these um, as a different type of compress. So if you have uh, what's the, the the bandages we use? I'm, from, I'm forgetting the word. Um, like a, uh, not a band aid, but like if you're making a compress. Um, you would use a cloth, use like a white cloth or um, cheese cloth or like a, yeah. like a um, breathable kind of fabric. Yeah. Uh, well, there's, I forget what it's called, but it, it comes in your, a lot of first aid kits. So you can use that, um, dip it into the tea or the decoction and wrap it over your wounds. Um, it's good for a lot of uh, bronchial complaints, allergies, and things like that. You can drink for that. Um, use it as a mouth, a mouth rinse um, for irritated eyes. And I mean, a lot of this stuff, um, I do have a lot of allergies. So it's another reason I was like, well, let's try out this plant that I hear all about um, because a lot of allergy symptoms, um, especially in the springtime, you know, you get the itchy eye, itchy and watery and red eyes, the runny nose, the itchy and sore throat, that kind of thing. And it treats a lot of those symptoms um, just as a tea or a decoction, reducing inflammation and that kind of thing. So, um, but yeah, it's anti-inflammatory. It has uh, stringent properties, cooling, soothing, like I mentioned. Um, it's also good for UTIs, apparently. I have luckily not suffered from such a thing, so I cannot speak for the uh, effects of plantain for that, but that is something I wanted to mention. And the only other thing uh, usage wise is uh, that's important to me and might be important to others is spiritually. Um, I started a lot of the plant study stuff because of uh, spiritual reasons. And there's a lot of overlap in these areas. So um, you don't have to be practicing a particular tradition, but um, if you're doing, uh, I guess, magic or for yourself or for uh, any kind of spiritual practice, magic meaning like you want to put energy out into the universe to have um, the things you want or need in your life brought in, uh, Plantain is a good plant for that. It's uh, most popular for using with drawing, um, bringing things to you. So that ties into um, one of the actions that the plant has physically on the body. Uh, just bringing things to you, drawing them to you or removing them from yourself like negativity and uh, negative people. Uh, another 
use is uh, rewilding since it's a plant that has been brought all over the planet. Um, if you want to, you know, get in touch with your less civilized, uh, more unconscious self, uh, your uh, connect more with earth, things like that, uh, be a little bit more wild, I guess. Uh, using plantain in your rituals or in your magic is something. Um, and also strength, healing, and oh, snake repelling. That is one thing, one major uh, use I forgot. So plantain leaves are apparently good for snake bites. Again, don't have personal experience with that, but um, you can use it immediately, the fresh leaf or as a poultice using the uh, tea or uh, decoction for a snake bite. So of course, spiritual uh, mirroring the practical life of things, uh, you would use it for snake repelling, whether that is a literal snake or, you know, the figurative snakes in your life, um, that's up to you. But yeah, so that is most of what I know about plantain and some of the uses I had for it. I know it's also used in traditional Chinese medicine. I am about to butcher this name, but uh, Che Xiang Ji is what it's called in traditional Chinese medicine. Um, and I'm not sure the details. I know there's some overlap, but they obviously have their own thing. And it makes sense since it's spread worldwide. Wow, thank you so much. That was great. You gave us so much information. Um, you even reminded me of some things actually. So I, I thoroughly um, enjoyed that. Wow. So um, you know what I want to mention? Because you mentioned that's the about the skin, right? Because yeah, I think it's really good about the skin. Um, how to to use it with the compress and things like that. But when you were talking about it, what I was thinking in my head, I was like, you know what would be cool? Drying out the leaves into powder and you know, turn into a facial mask. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, would, yeah, it would be good. And, you know, acne and all that other stuff. So I'm like, yeah. you know what? do a little thing and then see and put it on because it does, it draws out impurities. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that is one of his like really great ability is able, able to draw out impurities. So I really love that because with acne, not just with wound, but with acne and all kinds of things and impurity in your face, you know, so trying it out would be really good. And people that love to make soap, right? Our soap making people out there. Lachette just gave you guys an awesome and additional herb that is great for the skin, whether it's eczema, acne, wound, you can add into your soap, you know, the butter mixes, all of those things. So I loved it. <laughs> it is very popular for that um, in the skincare uh, community. Um, and yeah, making the powder and then doing a face mask makes more sense than like just sticking yeah. on your face. And it's something people will be more familiar with. <laughs> yeah. I like that idea. I have to try it. No, I have to try it. It's a must. Yeah, because I really used it a lot for like either wound or um, mosquito bites, right? Mosquito bites happens all the time. Now, one thing I have to say, it doesn't, for me anyway, and my children, it doesn't always make the itchiness part of it go away, but the swelling, you know, the swelling definitely goes away. It will diminish the itchiness, but still a little bit uncomfortable this, but it's not as much. So I've experienced it that I experienced it and that was like something happening. Oh, where's plantain? <laughs> Chew it, put it on it, like squeeze enough of the juice out. And then if you look, you'll see like it's not as, it's not raised as much as really, you can see the inflammation going down. So if you're dealing with inflammation, that's a good herb too, to kind of help bring down the inflammation. 
I love it. I have eczema as well, Lisha, and uh, that was that was how I connected with the plant. Um, was I made a quick salve? Actually, I just made an infusion with some, some coconut oil, which is my normal routine, and just was like, this is gonna be my eczema coconut oil. This will be my like normal coconut oil. Um, and it's really, it did wonders for my skin. It felt really great. Um, and that cooling effect that you mentioned was something I experienced. Um, something I, I learned recently from another forager at the Foodway, Ana Lilia, was the fact that the seeds are um, really nutritious for you, but also a great addition to breads or crackers or on top of muffins um, for the texture, but also because they're high in like vitamin A and iron and like all these like critical Calcium, I believe, is another one that this plant is known for, especially the leaves. Um, so just like, I love the, the idea of like, okay, so if you're diving into wild foods and you're starting to bake, right, and you need something crunchy, maybe you look to wild plantain seeds that instead of, you know, them and poppy seeds, right? That's, that's <laughs> easy to collect, too. Uh, into your, your thing, and then nobody else will have it. You know what I mean? And that recipe, be like, what is that thing? There's just something different. You know, I can't quite put my hands on it. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, that reminds me, because I, I forgot about the seed thing. Um, apparently, you when you like cook them down, they form like a gel, kind of like flaxseed. I'm not sure what I would use the gel for other than my hair. Gel is not a thing <laughs> that I have yeah. much of my life, but... Yes, with the gel, just like with flaxseed, yeah, you can use it in your hair. And also just like with sea moss, when sea moss turn into gel, we'll put it in different things. Well, you can do that too. You can put it in smoothies, you can put it in drinks. Um, that's also the same thing that is used for, not the seed, but the husk, psyllium husk, that everybody go to the store and buy to help them be regular with their stool. That's coming, that comes from plantain. You know, that's where you get it from. So when I collect the seeds, the whole seed head in the fall, I'm like um, getting the seed and the husk and I've separated the two because it will separate itself very easily. So kind of play it both ways. Yeah, I appreciate when, when every single part of that plant has a purpose and like you can also engage with it all throughout the year. And that's what I'm hearing is like right now we can like go out and forage for those leaves, right? Because they're really tender right now. Um, we were actually just at Concrete a little while ago as a group and we were looking at them. Um, this is a perfect time. And uh, yeah, I appreciate that mid-season, late summer seed collection and just like recognizing, okay, these leaves are starting to get tough. What else can I enjoy um, or use this plant for? And I mentioned it in passing, but like the roots too, the powdered roots is very good for, um, like I said, the bowel irritation, um, I think. Yeah, it, 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 I think it has a, like a diuretic property. Yeah, yeah plantain is, is one of those plants, like even if, because you, you, you talked about spirituality and things outside of just the eating and medicinal part, but if, and you mentioned how it, you can find it all over the world, right? And different soil and it's thriving. And for me, what I'm picking from that is always like, wow, for me, that's how I learned from plants, right? I'll be like, okay, this plant has this type of characteristic, very resilient, can make it anywhere, no matter where it goes, it can make it. And then we think about us and, you know, just people living their regular life. It's like, listen, no matter what is being thrown at you, you can still make it. You know what I mean? Like, I to be able no matter where I go to still be able to thrive despite that the environment and things like that is different and that's what I see from those points I'm always like oh my god wow <laughs> the strength the strength this plant has yeah. is interesting such a giving plant such a giving plant it really is um, and I appreciate that you brought it into this space because it's definitely something, um, a plant that we all enjoy year round. So we want to highlight it through this series for sure. Um, you know, we're wrapping up on about 30 minutes. I'm wondering if there's any closing thoughts before we kind of head up for the, for the speak. I actually have one for you, Lachette. Um, just something for you to look into because you mentioned allergies and things like that. Purple dead nettle, which okay. there's quite a lot in concrete right now. Um, really, really great for for allergies, especially with pollen and all of this, all of this type of thing. If you're mm -hmm. allergic, things it's it's seasonal, right? Yeah. So 
Thank you, Quentin. I will definitely um, suggest to look into getting in some purple dead nettle. Oh. Nettle if you can too, but I know we don't have nettle. We don't have stinging nettle. Uh, yeah, like, I've heard about nettle and just like finding regular nettle, but I didn't know about the purple dead nettle. Yeah, I, I'm just everywhere, so I'll go. We'll set you straight. Some. After a couple more seasons, you'll be walking through and not even knowing, like, oh, I'm not affected this year. It, yeah. it, it's, it's great. It would be nice. Thank you. You're welcome. Now I know what it is that. I was literally, I was um, there the other day and I'm like, it's it's everywhere, um, even in the local parks here. Uh, and I'm like, I don't know if that nettle is okay. I only hear about, you know, stinging nettles and I don't find that anywhere other than like yeah. store powdered. Uh, so now I know and yeah. it will be really now I make the plan to work with that one. Well, well, that's a beautiful place, I think, to rest it. It's like remembering that it's spring and a little tips on like how to stay or cope through maybe some of these allergies that I know my, my staff and my team here are already starting to deal with, my partner as well. So I'm like, yeah, these are some good tips to carry us through the next couple of weeks for sure. Um, but a real special thank you, Lachette, for, for joining us today. And I uh, can't wait to be with you at the Foodway. Thank you, Journey Per Usual, for joining this series and supporting um, in all the ways you do. Um, I Thank you for having me. My pleasure. I will just shout out next week's guest. Uh, so next week we'll be joined by Jennifer Seda, um, and they'll be introducing, um, what are they introducing? Not weed. That's right, not weed. <laughs> So we'll be, we'll be learning about not weed and how, how we can connect with that plant, especially this time of the year, which is perfect. <laughs> Shout out to the coworker for the assistance. Yes. Cool. So we'll, also, we'll, we'll all come back together next Thursday. Until then, everyone be well, um, and we'll see you soon.